What's on your mind? Yeah, sure thing. Ask away. I've been thinking about that. Scylla's about as far away from civilization as I can imagine. Cold, barren rocks and the occasional mining operation. Clyde wasn't exactly a prospector. I guess we'll find out when we get there. Yeah, I was just a lonely orphan kid getting my knuckles dirty. Clyde? I want to say he saw some potential in me. Like as not, he just took pity on me. So he took me in. Gave me a place to live. Gave me something to believe in. Clyde wasn't an idiot. He kept his head down, worked hard. Did as he was told. You're not going to catch him standing on a soapbox decrying the tyranny of the board. But when the Mardettes had their backs turned, oh yeah. He carried on about starting a revolution. Said he was going to do something big. Yeah, boss? Captain, I wish to offer my commendations for convincing the UDL's gunship to leave HRS-1084. I did not favor the idea of being stripped and sold for parts. Destination reached. Scylla. Ford had an asteroid mining operation out here. I wonder what happened to him? You can't walk five meters without stubbing your toe on a loose rock here.
Looks like some sort of habitation. We're getting close to the hermit. I can feel it. Processing. Gas is incoming. That's the last of them. We I'm waiting the for this!
All I'm saying, son, is you'll generate more force with the proper grip. It's more like this, not like that. No offense, Max, but I think I know my way around a tossball stick. I got my own set of highly specialized skull cracking techniques. What have the solar winds deposited on my doorstep now? Just more dirt and debris? Or do you actually believe you are here seeking the truth? I must admit, I tire of the truth seekers. Mayhaps you're here to rob me? That would be so much more exciting. Oh, the audacity. Strangers enter my home and demand to know who I am? What fun! Is this a multiple choice question? Because I'm not sure I remember anymore. No, she's not. She's a lady of transcendent wisdom. Can you not see that? Very astute. And I'm out here to meditate and contemplate the unendurable mystery without being bothered. So why are you bothering me? We've been told this was once yours. I believe the knowledge within here contains the answers I seek. Answers that will free men's minds from toil. I can translate it, but it won't do you any good. I can see you are a man in a hurry. And the insights in that book would take you years of study to fully comprehend. I've spent my life in contemplation. I believe my mind is prepared to receive the truth. There is one way that can speed up the process. It involves a combination of several ingredients, some of which can be fatal. It is not for the faint of heart, or the unprepared. But is he truly? How did you find me? What happened to the thief who stole my book? I don't know what happened to him, but we... Uh, killed his son. But we had a good reason. Or maybe not. In hindsight, we may have acted rashly. One cannot reach enlightenment through petty acts of bloodshed. Such choices inform me only that your vicar is ill-prepared for the journey. Hmm. Okay, let's give it a whirl. Worst that can happen is he's driven insane. A small price, and a risk I am more than willing to take. I'm committed, no matter the cost. No matter the cost. <laughs> it's just drugs, Max. We ain't making you walk in front of a firing squad. All right. Head on into the meditation room and partake of the sacramental incense. It's waiting on the table when you're ready to begin.
Maximilian, why are you still doing this? You've been fighting against the world since before you left home. Haven't you figured out yet that the more you fight, the more pain you cause yourself? Mother, you're dead. You can't be here. I knew this was too good to be true. These are just cheap hallucinogens that have... Uh, 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 <clears throat> what's happening to my voice? Does my voice sound weird to you? And what's wrong with your face? What's wrong, Max? Can't think straight? Now you know how I feel. Uh, wait, forget I said that. Obviously, the victims of a tasteless joke being perpetuated. Uh, perpetrated? Uh, I mean, we're being made fools of, aren't we? When I get out of here, I'm going to show that hermit what you get for messing with me. Maximilian, always ready to give up, to lash out, always searching for answers, but always in the wrong place, never looking inside. Look inside yourself all the time, Max. But with your head buried up your posterior. And platitudes from a figment... Figment? Of my imagination, no less. Who said I wasn't a figment of your mind? But you know the truth. You don't need someone else to tell you. You've always known it. Everyone knows it. They just won't see it. We're overwhelmed with stories from our earliest days. The stories others tell us, and the stories we tell ourselves. These stories are how we try to make sense of our lives, but they are not real, are they? They're just stories. You need to drop your story and see the truth. I got your story right here. I'm Vicar Max. I'm uptight. I love the church, and I'm a stooge for the board. And I don't understand that Felix is a genius. What the fuck are you talking about? I just wanted to prove to my parents that I... that... I, damn it. You're right. Max, you need to lay the past to rest. What happened with your father and I, it's long dead. To obtain your goals, you must live in the chaos. Be fine with the chaos. Whether you resist or not, it will take you wherever it wants. More assuredly than even the fictional architect's plan you slave away to prove. No, that's not true. The basis of everything is order, not chaos. It's true, I know it is. So did you. Why are you denying it? Before you died, the plan made you happy. No, it didn't. I made myself happy. There's nothing holding you back but you. If you can't understand that, you will never understand anything. Goodbye, Maximilian. This whole thing, it's... it's... it's just a farce, right? Just... just my own brain working against me? You couldn't be more right. Hello, Max. What? Who? Why do you look like me? Are you me? Not really. I'm who you think you are. I am disciplined, controlled. I have no doubts, and I don't exist. Yet you have judged yourself against me your whole life. Why? Why do you berate yourself for not being me? Yeah, Max, why do you do that?
I don't. I mean, that's not how it is at all. I just... I don't know. Is it wrong to try to be a gooder, better person than I am? But that's not what you're doing, is it? You're desperately trying to find a story to organize reality in my head. A story to control everything. A new story of the happy you. The contented you. Me. That's not... Can't be right. I, I've only been searching for the answer to the equation because it will set us free, won't it? How? By removing the need to make any decision, to have your life completely controlled, the illusion of certainty. Your obsession allowed you to avoid the real question: Who are you? I'm Max. Me. I'm real. You can't convince me otherwise. Please don't convince me I'm not. The concept of Max is what's not real. By the architect. Architect. How could I have believed in an architect? That's ridiculous. I must be losing my mind completely. What you're saying almost makes sense. We exist inside our thoughts, thinking we're in control. That's it, isn't it? We have no control over anything. It's all lies. How could I not have seen this? But how do we escape our... ourselves? I see you're back with us. Feared we lost you there. Never seen anyone pass out yet stay upright before. Ruined? You seem to be having quite the time. Though I must admit I was a bit concerned when you stripped naked and tried to eat your clothes. I was joking. You passed out fairly early in the process. Well before I realized what an ignorant fool I've been. Everything is perfect. No. Well, perhaps in a way I have. Look, I'm not saying it's perfect in the way you're thinking. But it is still perfect. It's all there to be experienced, to be lived. Of course there is pain and loss, but the suffering is caused by trying to control reality. Clinging to the way you want things to be, not enjoying the way they are. I am content. I have finally found what I was looking for, even though I was looking for the wrong thing. So, have you found your answers? Not so much found as finally listened. Yes, it is quite the convoluted maze we build for ourselves. How right you are. Words are overrated.
I'll take your confession now. Fine hit, Captain! Tremendous work, friend. Here I was readying a daring maneuver, and you've come and saved me the trouble. Symptoms detected. Elevated heart rate. Dilated pupils. Increased sweat production. Subject appears to be terrified. I'm not terrified, you bucket of bolts. That's victory sweat. Meds, I'm guessing. Pirates love bits, and unlabeled meds are worth a bundle. The one and only. Uh, wait, who's asking? Wanda didn't send you, did she? I swear, land on Groundbreaker even a moment tardy, and that busybody's already been up your ass an hour. You tell her these Automex are coming, and sending a hired stooge to rescue me from certain peril only furthers my delay. No offense. Yes, well, I shan't. Give Wanda my chilliest regards. I find myself marveling at the complex simplicity of the Fibonacci spiral. I'm sure you know what that's like. Something vexing you, Captain? I wouldn't say my parents disowned me, strictly speaking. But before they died, they accused me of thoughtlessly abandoning them. I couldn't understand it. I was only trying to make them proud by becoming a better vessel for the plan, to feel the joy they felt. I was so certain my potential was wasted as a laborer, and was willing to risk everything just to prove to them that they were wrong. I was lost, misguided.
Captain, Felix and the Vicar are arguing again. Young Millstone, you look pensive. I don't know what that means, but I've been thinking. It ain't easy carrying a torch for the Rangers. <laughs> I understand. The Rangers' victories are your victories. Their defeats are likewise crushing. Are you serious? Wow, Max. Never expected you'd understand. This may come as a surprise to you, Felix, but I understand what it is. Hey, you. Looking for something? Where do you think you're going? Hey, nice form. Good delivery, too. You looking to join Captain Harlow's crew, huh? All right, go on through. Got my sights on you. Well, hey there, Hullhead. Clawed your way out of the Groundbreaker at long last? Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, were you expecting me to say something? Maybe a long time no see, or a you've aged, old man? Your captain has a sense of humor, Felix. Good. There's a time and place for humor. So, you took Felix under your wing. Kept him busy. Good. Kid always needed a place to belong. Felix will always have a place in this crew. He's family to us now. Hear that, Clyde? I've been making something out of myself. So long as you haven't been making a fool of yourself. I'm sure Felix has no end of stories to tell of your exploits together. I look forward to catching up with the boy. I imagine he has. I was a mentor to the boy during his formative years. You might say I have an elder brotherly interest in his development. Oh, it would have been nice to know that sometime in the last, uh, hang on, doing some math? Half a decade? I'm working on something. Something big. Something the likes of which Halcyon has never seen. And I want Felix to be a part of my initiative. I'm fulfilling a promise I made to the boy. That one day, he and I would change the colony together. That day has finally arrived. Easy there, Clyde. No one said nothing about throwing in with you. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty happy where I am. I'm not asking you to walk away from your captain, Felix. But neither should you allow yourself to be controlled by fear. Change is not to be feared. I brought you here because I want to know where Felix's loyalties lie. When the day of our revolution comes, I want to know that I can rely on him.
I understand that Felix is part of your crew, at least for now. If the thought of losing him troubles you, then understand that you're helping him solve a problem for an old friend. I want you to deal with a traitor for me. Name's Trask. Kill him, and bring me proof of his death. His ring should do nicely. Then Felix will have done me a favor, and I will be grateful. I imagine we'll catch up on lost time, have a long talk about his future. We're not a band of common pirates, Captain. We are revolutionaries. I expect a certain degree of intestinal fortitude from my soldiers. Trask was a coward. Ratted us out to the board. He's been an informant. Has been for years. When he realized I was onto him, he and his little cadre mutinied. Killed five of my own and tucked tail. I don't know where he's hiding, but his wife might. Rosanna. Lives on the groundbreaker last I checked. Rosanna knows my crew by name and face, but you're a stranger to her. She'll talk to you. Clyde offered me a hand when nobody else would. I'd say I owe him a good turn. There you have it, Captain. A favor for an old friend. We get rid of this traitor for you and I'm in? I mean, assuming I want in. We're building a new world together, Felix. You'll want in. Remember, I want proof. Bring me his ring. I don't care if the hand's still attached. Here, my token. Think of this as my personal signature. Anyone who knows me by my works will know me by this token. Well enough. It's been a few years, but I still remember a thing or two. You had a chip on your shoulder. You'd argue over anything and you'd never back down. What do you mean, had? And for the record, you never could admit when you lost an argument. You see what I had to deal with? Let's hear it. I was working on this plan for years, saving every bit I could, drawing plans, biding my time. I never intended to spend my life laboring on the groundbreaker. When the opportunity presented itself, I did what I had to do. I left. You might have said something. I had some ugly business in Scylla. If I'd told you, I would have implicated you. A revolution is the work of a lifetime, Captain. I've spent my life preparing for the day of Halcyon's reckoning. Everything you see around you is the result of that preparation. A base of operations, loyal soldiers, freedom from the board's oversight. Not all revolutions involve bloodshed and fire, Captain. The purest act of rebellion is to live according to one's own means, independent of any masters. One day, when the board is weak and Halcyon vulnerable, we may claim a piece of this system for ourselves. Until then, we bide our time. Hardly. The board is rotting from the inside. Tomorrow, next year, a generation from now, eventually, the board will fall to pieces. Entropy is the natural state of the universe, Captain. All systems inevitably dissolve. When that day comes to Halcyon, we will be ready. That was simultaneously the least scientific and most pompous statement I've heard in ages. Well done, Mr. Harlow. A vicar. I admit, I never imagined a man of the cloth living the adventurer's life. You do keep some interesting company. Was there anything else? The skies around Scylla are curiously absent of patrol ships. It's almost as if the board's sphere of influence is shrinking. Besides, our facility is well armed and located on defensible terrain. If the board tries to lay siege to us, we'll make them pay.
Clyde's got a crew of his own, huh? Good for him. Did you want to ask me something? I know, I know. Clyde comes off rougher than Mantis or Hyde. He's a good guy, though. Just gotta get to know him. I can always count on you for a straight answer. Honestly, he was... He was a lot more condescending than I remember him. Okay, okay, I get it. He's full of hot air. You're not wrong. Maybe we should go have a word with Trask. Get to the bottom of all this. Yeah, boss? I believe I hear Felix and Parvati discussing the latest Aetherwave serial. Oh my gosh, Felix, you've got to hear this. You remember that spin-off series about the mass marketeer? Halcyon Helen's coming on for a special moment. Destination reached. 